Welcome to John Mannix on Anderson's TV, and today I've got an old chum of mine, Simon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's hard to book him because he travels around the world demonstrating Zildjian, so we've dragged him in today before he goes out to Germany at Frankfurt. So Indeed. Um, he's going to talk us through a whole range of products today, so um, sort of we're going to debug any sort of mysteries because there's probably quite a few on the symbols we're playing. They're very new, they're very different, and... Yeah, we're going to talk through all the products. Tell us, tell us about what we're going to play today. They're, okay. all, they're all behind us. Anyway. All, right, so we've got uh, Gen 16, which I'm sure you've seen. Um, version we, 2. Version 2. These are the buffed bronze versions, uh, which are slightly darker than the original ones. we got the L80s, which are the lighter ones over here. Uh, the low volume, 80% quieter than normal symbols. And then we've got a few special real symbols, which have got pickups on, uh, which we'll talk about later on. So we, we're going to play a range of volumes and a range of styles and sort of show you what these are capable of doing. Um, Simon's going to take us through a whole sort of presentation for you. So I'm not going to do any more talking, so I'm going to leave it to Simon. He's going to play a lovely Yamaha Live Custom and play these cymbals for you. Hi, I'm Simon Goose, and I am here with Zildjian at Andertons to show you the Gen 16 from Zildjian, which are these. Now, um, what I want to cover is what they are, what they aren't, um, who they're for, most importantly, and a few sort of clever things that you can do with them. So, what are Gen 16? Well, this is a Gen 16 buff bronze symbol, and it's uh, a Zildjian alloy, but with lots of holes in it, and the holes have two really, really big effects. One of them is that it reduces the volume. Because there's so much less metal there, it makes the whole symbol much, much quieter. And the other thing is it removes all the low end. If you're doing a gig and you've got overhead microphones like we've got here, the first thing the engineer will do is get rid of all that low end, just so you get the bright, sharp attack of the cymbal and the stick sound. These have got that sound already built into them. That's just the cymbals. But if we just had the cymbals, that would, that's only half the fun. So um, underneath, Attached through one of the holes, I've got something called a direct source pickup, and that picks up the vibration in the metal. Now, now is a very good time to say what these aren't. These are not sample triggers. There's nothing to do with samples here at all. Um, when I hit these, what you're hearing is the sound of this actual metal um, through the pickup, uh, and that's what you're listening to. So, the pickup goes through a hole and I can move the pickup around the cymbal to give different sounds. So more towards the bell and it's a brighter, clearer sound, more towards the edge and it's a drier, darker sound. So the vibration from the cymbal goes down to this thing here, which very importantly, uh, you can change the color of, you can change the strobe pattern, flashing, anything else, or to be honest, you can also do that because let's face it, we are not guitarists. Um, so that goes down to this little box here, which is a uh, preamp, okay? And then preamp goes down, uh, signal goes down the cable to the box over here, which is called the DCP or Digital Symbol Processor. And that's where all the clever stuff is done. So what I'm in effect doing is hitting a symbol, the vibration is being picked up, sent to a box here, and then that's what you're actually listening to. Now, um, the, the box itself, the DCP, uh, I can store up to 99 different versions of every single symbol in this, and I can have five different channels. So if you notice here, I've got a hi-hat, I've got an 18-inch crash, I've got a 20-inch corope here, I've got a, a Gen 16 20-inch ride here, and I've got a bit of a mad stacker going on as well. So those are my five channels. And um, each one is not dedicated. I could have a, a, a ride or a hi-hat or a crash in each one. It really doesn't matter. But I can store these 99 different settings for each one. Okay, well, what am I actually storing? Well, what it is, I'm just changing the EQ curve of the symbol, which means, you know, like on, a, on, um, uh, on your phone, you can actually change the, the frequency response of the music as you listen back to it. Well, I can do the same here. If you think about a, uh, a K Custom and an A Custom, they sound very, very different. It's the same metal, it's just been hammered to give a different sound. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing the sound of the symbol electronically. Right, so what I've got here, my 18 in front of me has got a little lonely rivet in it. And if I had just overhead microphones, you wouldn't be able to hear it in a noisy situation because it would just get lost in the general wall of sound. But to show you how sensitive the pickups are, if we turn off all the other mics, I'm gonna hit this 
18 Gen 16 with my finger and you will be able to hear the sound of that rivet vibrating in the hull. Okay, so incredibly sensitive, absolutely fantastic. So the signal comes down the cable to the DCP and there's different buttons on the DCP so I can change just with the sound of one symbol or I can change the sound of the whole set depending on what I want to do. So if I want to make it go from a, a bright sound to a dark sound, just one symbol press, one single press with a single finger and I can do it nice and easily. I can pan everything separately, I can adjust the volume of everything separately. Now, as well as just using the Gen 16s, we can also mount these pickups in other symbols. So the actual setup I've got here, I've got a, if I just move this, I've got a conventional K top, I've got a Gen 16 14 inch bottom and the pickup is attached to the bottom symbol. And to give you an example of what I can do, if I just play my hi-hats, um, okay, and I can just change the sound of the hi-hats as I'm playing. Okay. So it's like having uh, the abilities of electronic drums, but without uh, having to use rubber pads. And that takes us very neatly onto who these are for. Now, there's three different main groups who can use these. Uh, firstly is electronic drummers. If you've got an electronic kit and you want to practice your ride technique, playing on a rubber cymbal pad isn't exactly the most comfortable thing. Uh, it doesn't feel like a real symbol, it's generally too small, and just the stick response isn't the same. But with the Gen 16s, I can have these on my electronic kit, and I can link up the module of the electronic kit into the back of the, the DCP, the symbol processor, and I can mix the two together. So I could be playing my electronic kit with Gen 16 symbols, and I've got something which actually feels like a real symbol, responds like a real symbol. I can use beaters, rods, rods, brushes, anything else you want, and it all works really, really well. So that's one thing. Secondly, that the hybrid thing, as we're talking about, uh, I've got the mix of real symbols and Gen 16 on the hi-hat. I've got a carope with a pickup on the bell just here as well. So we could go for some really quite cool different ways of using our normal cymbal sounds through the processor. I'll come back to the Corope in a minute. Then the Gen 16 ride as it is. Now, you might be listening to that going, that doesn't sound like a normal ride, but it's not a normal ride. Because of all the holes, like I said earlier, it removes all the low end. So when this gets good is if you use it in a very, very busy mix. If you use this in a busy mix, then the stick attack and the initial burst of sound comes through very, very clearly. And that's exactly what you hear in a, if you turn the radio on and listen to a track. You don't hear the low end of the cymbal. So this takes us on to the second uh, level, the hybrid players, but also the um, uh, well, the engineers. The engineers love this. And I, when I demonstrate this at music shows, I get loads of engineers coming up to me saying, we use this in, I know, house of worship, a church, or, or somewhere, or a live venue, or something like this, and we love the Gen 16s because we've got so much more control over them. There's no bleed, so I don't have to have overhead microphones. Um, there's just so many more convenient things to them. So let me just play the ride and a couple of the other cymbals with a busier track so you can hear what it sounds like in a mix. Okay, and as you can probably tell by now, 
these aren't real drums. Uh, well, they're real drums, but I've got mesh heads on them and I've got triggers. So everything you're hearing is actually uh, an electronic sound, apart from the cymbals, which you're hearing through the pickups. So the biggest area that this is being used in at the moment, especially in America, is uh, churches. Because uh, where there's a noise issue, they often have the drummer in a little perspex box, which is very hot and very sweaty. Uh, but with these, you can actually reduce the whole onstage volume. You can have these cymbals, keep the volume down, and it works really, really well. And the engineer can just change the sound as he's going. And how's he changing the sound? Well, let's go on to the editor. Uh, there's a screen behind me, but we'll do some screen grabs later. I can run something called the Access tool, which is, uh, will run on PC or Mac or iOS. And I can plug it into the, the processor, and I can actually change the sounds. So um, on the screen behind me, I've got what it looks like. I can change the pitch. I can change the tone. I can make it brighter or darker. I can change the stick attack of the cymbal sound, which is very, very cool. I can change the amount of cymbal wash. And also, I can change the reverb. So I can do that 99 times for every single cymbal and just store it in the processor. Very, very simple. Right. OK, so I mentioned the Corope earlier. The Corope is a standard 20 inch ride. I've got a pickup mounted in the belt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play a bass line. I'm just gonna play the ride and I'm just gonna change the sound of the ride as I'm playing every couple of bars, okay? So something like this. Okay, so you can hear the difference, hopefully. Um, so I can make one normal acoustic cymbal sound thinner, darker, brighter, anything else you want. Um, we all hear cymbals differently. So what works for me might not work for you, what works for you might not work for me. But that's the great thing about the access tool is that we can all go in and we can mess about with our cymbal sound and we can actually come up with the stuff that we want to, how we want it to sound, okay? So who it's for, Electronic drummers, hybrid drummers, treat them as one group. Um, live venues where there is a noise problem. And then uh, churches. So those are the, the big, big ones. One thing I've really got to stress is the feel of them. Because they are real cymbals, they actually sound and feel like I'm playing a real cymbal. So when I hit a rubber cymbal pad, I get no vibration up my arm. It just feels like I'm hitting something dead. With this, when I hit it, the vibration goes up my stick, up my arm, and it feels like I'm playing just a normal, something like the Corope, but with very, very little volume. Now, talking of volume, I'll just do a quick comparison between the three cymbals that I've got here. So I'm just gonna turn down all the sound going out electronically. And I've got the 20 inch Corope, I've got the Gen 16 20, and I've got the L8020 as well. And I'm gonna play each one, and we're just gonna have it over the overhead mics. We're not gonna have any electronics or anything else like this, just so you can hear the volume difference between the three different cymbals. So if we say the Corope is 100% normal volume, The Gen 16 is probably about 40 to 50% quieter. And then the L80s, which we're going to talk about later, are 80% quieter than a normal cymbal. Okay, so you've got three different volume levels available in Zildjian cymbals. The normal cymbals, the Gen 16s, and the very quiet L80s. Right, so what's next is because the direct source pickups only pick up the vibration in what they're attached to, you can use them for some really clever stuff. So you've seen the hi-hats with the K top and the Gen 16 bottom, and we've talked about the, the Corope with the pickup in it. So over here, I have got a stack, which is hopefully coming through the overhead camera. Uh, you can see that there. And this is a combination of uh, L80s, Gen 16, and normal cymbals. 
and because they're all touching then the vibration is going through all the symbols so I've just got one pickup on it and everything is going through that one pickup all the cymbal sounds are going through that one pickup so if we just mute the overhead mics and I'll play it and you'll be able to hear the whole thing And then the other thing is that with Gen 16, your cymbal sound is in the audio frequency. It's not something which is coming through mics, it's actually coming down through cables. So we can actually start doing some really clever stuff which no one's been able to do before. So for this, let me just put my cans on. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna play the hi-hats and some of the other cymbals, but I'm gonna start putting effects on them in real time. So um, I've got a delay. Okay, but also I've got a filter over the whole kit. So if I play one-handed and turn the knob on my controller down here, you'll hear the whole kit just fading, uh, filtering down. Okay, so put that all together and you can come up with some quite clever stuff. So I hope you learned a lot from that. I did, and I know a few of the people that were in the back of the room didn't even realise these things existed. So you definitely should have learned something. Um, if you need to know any more information or you've already tried them and were, can't figure something out, this man will personally help because he runs a fantastic website that lots of pros use um, of all sorts of people. You can name drop and clang a few, but everyone has left you positive reviews and uh, it's a cool website to check out below. The link's been at the bottom. Absolutely, edrominfro.com. And this man will get back to you. He's the global demonstrator for various brands and is very good at what he does. So uh, check it out. Um, for our Anderton's links, check it out. We put all the products below that we sort of cobbled together, whichever stacks we use. We'll figure it out and tell you at the bottom. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>